Music Kraken allows you to use many kinds of input sources to generate MIDI events and send them to all kinds of output devices to make music. The input sources can be the touches on the screen or sensors like the accelerometer, camera or microphone. You can combine almost everything as you wish, use different sensors to control different aspects of a virtual instrument or control multiple instruments at once. Mobile devices contain all kinds of sensors that can be used or misused to make music with and most people already own a mobile device or tablet, so I thought to myself why buy new gear if I already own it? Well I still like to buy new gear but you can do a lot with this. The MIDI events can be sent via Wi-Fi or USB cable to other computers running a digital audio workstation. Or you can send them to other apps that support background audio or you can host audio unit extensions directly in the app. The main idea of Music Kraken is to improve the ways you control virtual instruments and synthesizers and create new ways to make music. Everything can be adjusted so that it fits the instrument you are controlling with it perfectly. The generated MIDI events can be sent through various effects. These for example transpose the notes or split the played chords into separate notes so that each can be sent to a separate instrument. Or they can change the MIDI channel so that you can recombine them or layer them however you want. Everything is as modular as possible. Currently you can use the following input modules. The keyboard has a typical musical keyboard layout with white and black keys. Touching one of the keys generates a MIDI note on event and releasing it generates a MIDI note off event, which basically should play and stop notes in your virtual instrument if everything is correctly connected. Additionally to touching the keys you can also slide on them. There are separate ports for vertical and horizontal sliding. The typical way to use this sliding would be to change the modulation of the instrument while pressing the keys so instead of using one hand to control the mod wheel on your keyboard you can do it while pressing the keys. But you can assign the sliding to whatever MIDI event type you want. You could also generate notes and send them to a different instrument while sliding thereby playing different instruments at once on one key which might not make much sense in most cases but maybe it does to you. Maybe as a side info, please note that not all combinations that you can make in Music Kraken make much sense. You can create very strange input controllers if you want. But who am I to decide what makes sense or not to you? I actually discovered various combinations that I didn't think were very useful but were quite useful in the end. On the keyboard you can also highlight notes of a specific scale on the keys or even disable keys that do not belong to that scale which makes it easier to play in key or discover new scales that you never used before. The chords pad is a different touch input control that has a button for each chord in a scale. You can select a scale and directly play chords that are made up from notes of that scale. Vertically there are also buttons for the inversions of these chords. Like on the keyboard you can also generate additional MIDI events by sliding while holding down a button. So you can for example hold down a chord and control its volume by sliding. In the newest version of the app you can also split the control area and play two keyboards or chord pads at the same time. You can for example have a chord pad on one side and the keyboard on the other. Maybe highlight the selected scale on the keyboard and play chords with one hand and the melody with the other. The accelerometer module allows you to use data from the accelerometer which measures the acceleration of your device, so how you move and rotate it. You can for example control the modulation or generate notes depending on how you rotate the device. This property mostly makes sense when combining it with other input modules. The microphone module has a simple note detection algorithm that generates note on and note off events depending on the notes that are detected. By default there is a slight delay for this so that you can hit the notes more accurately but this can be changed in the settings for this module. There is also a volume port. You can use this to convert the amplitude of the microphone input to whatever MIDI event type you like. The camera of your device can be used for multiple input types but this depends on what hardware you have. So very important if you only want to use the True Depth Control or the AR Kit face tracking, please make sure you actually have a device that has a True Depth front camera. For hand tracking, the normal camera can be used, but this only works since iOS 14 and probably only makes sense on newer devices because of the detection speed. On Android, there is so far only face tracking available 
And it is a bit simpler than on iOS because not all features can be detected that accurately without a depth sensor. So, if you have an iOS device with a true depth front camera, you can use the closest distance of whatever is in front of the camera as the input source. The typical way of how I use this is to hover the hand above the device and move the hand up and down. So you can, for example, create notes this way, as if you would play something like a theremin, or use this as a source for modulation while playing notes on the keyboard. This doesn't actually detect your hand, there is another module for that. This module simply uses the closest distance of whatever is in front of the camera, so you could also use your feet or head or whatever. The AR kit face tracking module also is only available on devices with a true depth camera. AR kit is the augmented reality framework provided by Apple, and to accurately detect all facial features, this needs the information of the true depth sensor. I will probably add another face tracking module that uses the normal camera instead soon, but it will not be as detailed as the AR kit face tracking. With the ARKit face tracking module, you can use your face to generate MIDI events, so you can use your head, mouth, eyes and even your tongue movements to make music. Which probably sounds quite stupid and useless, but it actually can be quite useful. Except maybe the tongue, I just added that for fun. The nice thing about any of the camera input modules is that they are contactless. You do not need to touch the device while manipulating them. And for face tracking you do not even need your hands. Which means you can, for example, play notes on a real physical keyboard and use the head or mouth movements as a source for modulation or volume or whatever. For some instruments like vocal sample libraries the movement of the mouth creates very natural data. It's probably not as natural as using a breath controller, but if you already have a device with a true depth camera, why not try it? Hand tracking tracks the position of your hand on the camera image. It doesn't use the true depth camera, but the normal camera instead, so you can also use it on other iOS devices as long as they have at least iOS 14 installed. You can either point the camera at you and move the hand up and down or sideways, or you can place the camera on the table and move the hand forward and backwards and sideways. Additionally, the app computes a few parameters from the detected fingers. The open value can be changed by opening and closing your hand. The angle value is defined by the angle of your hand on the camera image. It actually measures the angle of your middle finger, but let's wave here. Tilt is the least accurate of those values, you can tilt your hand to change it. And size tries to compute the current size of your hand on the image by measuring the distance between your wrist and the base of the middle finger, so this can be used instead of distance measurements, but it's less accurate. If you combine the hand tracking with the true depth module, you get three dimensions of control, plus a few other interesting combinations. You also always need at least one of the output modules. The following outputs are currently available. You can send MIDI events via Wi-Fi to other devices. On iOS I actually included two different implementations of that. There is the Core MIDI Network module and the Snarp Network MIDI module. The first one is Apple's implementation of the RTP MIDI and has a few advantages on iOS because it can continue communicating even when the app is closed. The SNARP network MIDI module is my own cross-platform implementation of RTP MIDI, so it works at least on iOS, Android, Windows and Mac and is more configurable than Apple's implementation. If you need more than one port to send data, you can combine both modules. Set the SNARP network MIDI port number to a higher one than the one Apple uses and connect to both. To send MIDI events to devices connected via USB, use a MIDI output module. With this module, you can also send MIDI to other apps that support MIDI while running in the background. This is faster and more reliable than using MIDI via Wi-Fi. To connect an iOS device to a Mac via the lightning cable, enable inter-device audio and MIDI in the audio MIDI setup utility on the Mac. To connect Android to a computer via USB, Set the connection type to MIDI after it is connected.
On iOS, the app can also host audio units. This way you can make music directly on the device. The audio units can be configured from the main screen and you can also load factory presets there. In the near future, the app will also support Bluetooth MIDI connections, but I still need to do a few optimizations and tests there. I also included a very simple synthesizer in the app called SimpleSynth. This is perfect for playing around and testing the other features because it is independent of the other apps or devices, but you probably won't use this to make complex music. I also added a few MIDI effect modules to the app. They are very useful if you want to control multiple instruments at once and create complex setups. Let's start with the most useful one, at least for me, the chord splitter. The chord splitter module splits incoming chords into separate notes and sends each note to a separate channel. So if I, for example, play a chord consisting of three notes, by default the highest note will be sent to channel 1, the middle note to channel 2 and the lowest note to channel 3. This is configurable, so you can start at any channel or start with the lowest note instead. By splitting the chords into separate notes, you can play multiple instruments at the same time. And each instrument can be a legato or mono instrument, so you can also turn monophonic legato instruments into polyphonic legato instruments by loading and controlling multiple instances of the same instrument. Which is a lot of fun. By combining this with the other effects modules, you can control a full orchestra with just one input module this way. When you push the keys of a chord, there will be a short delay because at least I cannot push all keys of the chord exactly at the same time. This delay can be changed in the settings for this module, so adjust it to your playing style. There is a second delay in the settings, which applies to when I change from one chord to another chord with the same amount of notes. This way I can play faster if I, for example, hold down a chord with one hand and play the melody with the other one. With the MIDI transposer you can transpose all notes passed through it. This is very useful in combination with other modules. You can, for example, transpose the lowest note after it is split by the chord splitter down one or two octaves and send it to a cello instrument while the top note is sent to a violin and therefore play different note ranges simultaneously. The channel switcher can be used to change the channel of incoming MIDI note on and note off events. You can use it, for example, to send one note to multiple instruments at once and create advanced layering setups. The value to MIDI converter is automatically created every time you connect a green value port to an orange MIDI import in the editor. Most input sources generate some kind of numeric values, like for example how much your mouth is open, which has a range of 0 to 1, or the accelerometer measurements, which are in the range from minus 1 to plus 1. With the value to MIDI converter, you can define how these numeric values should be converted to MIDI events. You can convert the values to control change events, like for example the mod wheel, channel volume, expression, breath controller and so on. Or you can convert it to notes. You can define the range of the notes that should be created and even restrict it to notes of a specific scale. Or you can generate channel pressure or pitch bend events if you want. If you connect a green value port to an orange MIDI import in the editor, it should automatically set a useful input range to the created value to MIDI converter but you might still want to change this depending on what the outcome should be. These were the modules that are included in the app so far. There will probably be more modules in the future. I have already started implementing a few that might make this app even more useful, but you should already be able to do a lot with what is already there. I hope you have a lot of fun discovering new ways of making music.